Welcome back to Disco Elysium, the Ballad of Officer Superstar. When we last left our heroes, Kim was in bed and Superstar was trying to figure out what to do with himself because he couldn't find Klaji. I had forgotten that we had another task we needed to do without Kim and that was check out the Delta Logistics thing down here. So... I thought they were working all hours. They're closed. What kind of crap is that? Uh, I'm not sure how to get rid of Kim during at a reasonable hour. We, we need him to not be around for Klaji, for that thing. Scribble between the thighs of a page three girl. La Orge du Disco. All right. Um, let, why don't we finish the Dick Mullen book? In your hand. You hold Dick okay, I'm gonna skip through this. Mistaken identity. The brittle paperback feels fragile to the touch. I'll pick it up when we are solving the murder. Okay, here we are. We're gonna say I figured it out, but I actually haven't figured it out, so I don't know what we're gonna do. So, who did it, Detective? Who killed Charlie Spillane and Deanna Deneur? Well, let's say love did them in, because that is what Superstar would say, even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What? That doesn't even make sense. There's never a straight answer with you, is there? You just get hooked on random stupid notions and then repeat them every chance you get. Yeah, that's exactly what we did. That's awesome. Now go on. Find out who really did it. All right, let's finish the book. You begin furiously flipping through pages. Even as you know these books follow a series of well-worn tropes, you find yourself completely engrossed. You're turning pages so fast you don't even notice the ancient spine coming unglued. Oh no, are the pages gonna fall out? You try to grab the pages as oh, they come loose. Oh my gosh. But your oh my gosh. aren't quick enough. They're gone. Wow. Wow. Look at this. We got an eight in reaction speed and we needed a 20. That's incredible. Dozens of pages scatter across the ground. The last fifth or so of the book seems to have been lost. It's possible that you could gather and reassemble the pages but it would take way too long. Ah, now I'll never know. That's right. You never will. But then, isn't that how it is in real life, detective? I guess so, but we're hoping that we will be able to figure it out. Last year, more than 71% of murders in Rivershall went unsolved. In Rivershall West, that number was closer to 85%. Yeah, but we're, we're a superstar cop. We solve murders. In your hand, you hold four-fifths of Dick Mullen and the mistaken identity. All right, let's put the book away and get out of here. I had hoped, excuse me, I had planned to read the books to pass time, but then I realized if we just want to pass time for some reason without Kim, we can sit on the bench. So I'm not going to read the books now because that's a good way of passing time when we're with Kim. So instead, I, I, I'm out of ideas for what to do so we are going to go to our shack and go to sleep. And in the morning, we will have a new plan, I guess. It's getting late and it's snowing. Time to call it a day. Yes, let's call it a day. Okay, let's get in bed. Oh wait, what happens if we look in the mirror? An old mirror hangs on the wall. Oh. You see your reflection in Ooh. it. Ooh. The expression fixed to your clean-shaven face. You're still not accustomed to it. Wow. Okay. We can uh, we can attempt to stop the expression from happening, and we now have an 83% chance. Plus one because we shaved. And we recited the poem. Oh, we are kicking butt here. Let's go for it. It's like something Yay. snaps in you. A nerve ending. A thought. A sadness. Your face in the mirror is suddenly clean of the leer that had distorted it for God knows how long. Wow, that that was one of the first tasks we had. That's so cool. Just like that, it's over. The running gag that your life had become. A sad old man looks back at you. Oh, that's not so uplifting. I expected it to be positive. All right, let's let the mirror be for now. Well, that was... That was kind of depressing. What happens if we look in the mirror again? An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it. Such as it is. A regular, clean-shaven police officer. Oh look, we no longer have the grimace either. So not only did we shave off all that hair, but we no longer have the grimace in our profile photo. 
That was uh, anticlimactic. All right, let's go to sleep. The bed is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. All right, let's go to sleep. The place feels almost like home now. Quiet and dignified around you. A new life by the seaside. You're incredibly tired. The darkness and warmth come fast. You're falling asleep. It's easier this time. Drifting off, your head has found a comfortable indent in the pillow. Your legs and your torso feel like lead weights sinking to the bottom of the sea. Until they're suddenly light. This respite, you've earned it, brother. Bask in the darkness. Let it swallow you up and swivel you around while you forget everything you've managed to remember. So this is more kind of evidence that we are approaching the end of the game because we can say, is this the last dream? But I'm not actually going to say that yet. I'm going to say, but I've been bad. I haven't earned this because I still think Superstar is pretty down on himself. Now you haven't. You've just... Bean. Now we'll say, is this the last dream? No, this is the one before that. We'll just keep cycling it for you if you don't mind. As long as we can. Spin it like black yarn. Enjoy it while it lasts. Okay, I will. I'll enjoy the whole game while it lasts. And then maybe we'll do it again. Thank you, Darkness. Thank you. You're welcome, Harry boy. You earned it. Fall into a deep, uninterrupted sleep. After centuries of darkness, the alarm rings. But what's this? You actually feel rested. There's no time to cuddle with your pillow, however, or as much as shiver from the cold. The world awaits. All right, we'll open our eyes. Oh wow, three morale healing. Amazing. We still look pretty shitty getting up. Alright, so Kim's going to be out here. I'm wondering if when he took the body, I should have done some of the things we needed to do without Kim. But too late now if that's the case. Good morning, Kim. How are you, sir? Let's go over to the failed R&D building. And we are going to, oops, we're going to look at the mural and hopefully track down Ruby. Oops, where am I? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, no, no, I'm where I thought I was. Okay, here we go. Okay, little auto save. All right, let's look at the mural. The once bright mural towers above you, saying, Feld Electrical, R and D. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Okay, we're going to do this impossible shivers where we have a 97% chance. Listen to the wind again. Suddenly, there's a sigh carried on the molecules around you, moving, flowing from high pressure to low pressure, like that of a woman emptying her lungs. She wraps the collapsing stone box in front of you in her breath, flowing through it. Where does it go? In through the collapsed roof, flowing down a concrete staircase to the basement, sweeping away footprints in the dust on the stairs, and then the beach below the boardwalk, its winding tunnels, a whisper away. What is happening? She's down there. I think she's down there, below this building. Okay, why? Ever since I woke up, maybe even before, I've been getting these strange cold spells. Good, good, yes. Cold spells. So basically your hangover is telling you she's down there? Call it a gut feeling, Kim. So, how do we get in there? The doors were on the collapsed side of this building. They're gone, basically. There's a ladder next to the sign. We can point to it. It's, see, it's right here. Perhaps we can climb it. Enter through the roof? Perhaps you can climb them. We are not climbing anything. 
I'm 43 years old and I plan to live to see 70. Ah, Cam, we're like a decade older than you. Shoot, I hope we don't fall climbing this thing. Can we climb it now? Does it show up? Yes, it does. Oh, and what's this? Okay, wait a minute. Let's go check this thing out first. Was that always there? No, I don't think that was always there. I hit tab like crazy over here. An old pipe peeks out from beneath the rotten boards of the boardwalk. Could this be an alternative path into the fell building? A building like this must have multiple doors serving various functions. Perhaps a basement access. Perhaps. Let's come closer and look in. Your eyes slowly begin to oh. adjust to the darkness inside the drainage pipe. The lieutenant looks over your shoulder. What's in there? An ordinary drainage pipe. Darkness. Okay, smartass. What else? As your eyes adjust, you see some trash. Crumpled up newspapers. Cigarette butts. Someone has half-heartedly spray-painted skulls on the right side. And? And? And nothing. Broken glass from bottles thrown against the walls of the pipe. A syringe. Could we get into the fell building through this pipe? Given that this isn't a martial arts thriller, it's highly <laughs> unlikely and not without risk to our health either. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to crawl through broken glass and syringes. However, the pipe suggests there may be an entrance to the basement around. Ah, the lieutenant pushes aside the reeds and looks around. And it's right here. A maintenance door. He points to a rusted metal double door to the right of the pipe, obscured by the reeds. Oh yeah. Big boy time. Whoa. This needs you to put your back into it. Ah, uh, you know, doing this, doing this wasteland thing has really screwed us because it's minus two physical instrument. We get plus one for breaking into a communist apartment, though. Let's check. Can, we can check thoughts right now, can't we? Seven hours and seven minutes. Ah, uh, damn. I think we might need to read. All right, let's get out of here. Well, we can try. Fine, let's try it. We have an 8% chance. You and the oh, what a shock. Lean all your weight into pushing the doors apart, but you're not quite synchronizing your efforts. They slam shut again before you can enter. Boy, I've, I've actually thrown out obstacles to us just with this one thought. Let's take a breather and try this again later. It's very tough. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And let me just double check. I should have checked before. We have one more point we can put into physical instrument later. So we're almost certainly going to do that once the wasteland thing is done. Damn. That thing is really screwing us. All right, let's go try the ladder, I guess. And if we die, we'll, I guess, reload or something. A rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Some of the rungs are missing. Yeah, that doesn't look good at all. No, let's assess the situation. The distances between the remaining rungs are rather wide. You'd have to use the mounting brackets. However, they seem corroded and the peeling rust is razor sharp. Well, that's sort of off-putting. In addition, the first rung is going to be tough to reach. It's what, three meters above the ground? And you're 180? 190, I'm a giant. A giant superstar. Okay, but still, the roof is collapsing and the wind gets pretty brutal up there. Dismounting from the ladder is going to be hard. Perhaps if you were to not climb the ladder. Instead, what if you were to reconceptualize climbing the ladder? The heck does that mean? Yeah, because falling from that height seems, well, splat. So don't do that. Just, you know. Okay, what if I don't climb? What if I just teleport? Hmm? Teleportation is not a thing. Come on, Kim, where's your adventurous spirit? This really has nothing to do with adventure. We are dealing with basic physics here. All right, but it won't hurt to try. Oh, yes, it could hurt a lot. Oh, my God. We saw Tiago climbing, and we have the magnetic die set. So even with a savoir-faire of two, we have a 58% chance of making this thing. We also, I think, are wearing stuff that reduces our savoir-faire. So we are going to just double-check that. Yes, we have a minus one from the flare-cut trousers. So let's fix that. Okay, let's put on these. Here we go. Oversized sunglasses. So now we have a savoir-faire of four. What do you mean bonus? Oh, 
bonus from items plus one. Yeah, bonus from items plus one, but it's now two higher than it was because we were wearing a minus. Let's try again. The rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. 83%. Okay, we are going to teleport to the roof. On second thought, maybe teleportation isn't a thing. Wow, we missed by two. Why? Why is it not a thing? Because you're just standing there squeezing your buttocks and nothing is happening. All right, let's not say the stupid thing. The lieutenant looks at you with that. I know you're thinking the stupid thing. Look, <laughs> as you grow tired of clenching your buttocks and give up. Well, I, I'm really inclined since we have so many points to drop a point in Savoir Faire. But we have... Savoir Faire has been our our bugaboo since the beginning. So I, I, can't, I can't justify doing that. So let's put our other sunglasses back on. Okay, well that's lame. I'm not going to spend the point on it. I, I, I just can't justify it. So where does that leave us? Where does that leave us? I'm not sure where that leaves us. So this might be one of those episodes where I end up doing a fair bit of editing. We're going to run over to the boardwalk right now, see if we can find evidence of the of the gun, or excuse me, of the shot that killed Lele. Let's check. Let's see what's next. Let's. Well, I'm going to go over to the Delta Logistics. And just double check that it still exists, even though we can't do anything without Kim. Or we can't do anything with Kim here. Hey, Saling, how you doing? Oh. No. Uh, may okay, maybe the window's closed for this. Yeah, maybe, maybe too much time has passed. Well, that's annoying. Let's see if we can get anything out of anybody else, but I think... I think everything's done. We just need to kill time to get rid of the wasteland thing. Why are we circling? What are you doing, Superstar? Right to work! Are you a mercenary hired by Wild Pines? Free flow of commerce! Don't talk to him any longer. Just leave, please. No, say very quietly. Is there a tribunal being convened by any chance? Fuck it, fuck. He breathes out slowly, his giant chest deflating and his mouth Slightly open. I'm going to interpret that as a yes. There's a tribunal, and it won't be long until it's ready. How about you fuck off now, huh? Mm -hmm. I think we probably should. Okay, of course. Okay, let's the back man's off. The breathing steadies, but his eyes are still narrow. Slowly, he's trying to get his right to work dance back on. All right, I'm just gonna leave now. We can go talk to what's his name. The uh, old soldier, Rene. Hola, wandering man. How can I uh, help you? No, you can't. All right, let's go talk to Rene. Rene was a composure check, so we're gonna run over to Rene. Well, that was fruitless. Yeah, there are fewer and fewer things to do, which again leads me to believe we are nearing the end of the game, and it has been quite the journey. I've had an unbelievable time. This game is just so well crafted. Renee, are you over here? Oh, what? Oh, wait, is that Gaston? The old history teacher? Officer, care to play a game with the lonely old man? What happened to Renee? Actually, never mind. Wouldn't be the same. Where is Renee? The prick is gone. I... Oh no! I can barely believe it. But he's really gone. He died? He is trying to retain his jolly facade. But the underlying sadness casts a deep shadow over his wrinkled face. Gone? Gone where? Well, most likely. He was an absolute Kent. How did he die exactly? His hungry little heart finally gave out. The dock workers found him in the garden. Oh my this god. Morning. Wasn't even supposed to be working for another week, but he just had to prove how tough he is. But we had a composure check that we were all set to do against him. Well, how selfish of him. Did he feel like he has to prove he can still pull his weight? Doesn't need handouts. Yeah, that's what it sounds like, Logic. Yes. He was about to head home, cause when the dock workers found him, he was wearing civilian clothes and not the coquette uniform 
I saw him in all the time. Sometimes I thought he was wearing it just to piss me off. Now the joke's on him, cause he's gonna be buried without it. Do you think our conversation about his job pushed him to go out there? No. Rene was the most stubborn man in Revachol. Nothing you or I could say would ever push him to do anything. The man was completely immovable. This game is so filled with sadness. He has doubts, but right now, he just wants to move on and not think about it. He called him a, a word we don't really say in American English. All right, I offer my sincere condolences. Yes, we are both very sorry for your loss. Sincerely. It is what it is, part of life really. But to know someone for 79 years, then one day they're just gone. Ugh, that is horrible. Just a hole in your life. Just horrible. I just don't know anymore about anything really. But you, you must need something. I want to go over a few more things about Rene, if that's okay. Yes. What about Rene? All right, was he really that bad? I repeat, an absolute cunt. Even his old army buddies didn't want him around. He was like an old viper. Wow. The only people who could stand to be around him were Jenny and me. She saw something in him when we were just kids and... Uh, and she never lost sight of it. And I thought if the most beautiful being in the world can love him, then there must be something worth holding on to. Did you love him too? We've hated each other our entire lives. So much, in fact, that... He falls silent and looks at us, eyes filling up with tears. Yes, I... I loved that angry prick. He didn't deserve it, but I did. You know what his last words to me were? How about just tell me? In Guillaume's time, you'd have been shot without trial. That's what he said to me. He lived a cunt, and he died a cunt. Let's leave it at that. Wow. Gaston, here's something to remember your friends by, and we're going to give him the photograph of Renee and the girl. Let me see. This was 60 years ago. We all went to that parade. Young Renee looks so happy, and Jenny... Eyes blurry with tears, he has to stop. I'm sorry, officer. I just... Thank you. Thank you for this little memorabilia. It really means the world to me. That was nice. A small thing for us, but invaluable to him. He probably didn't even know when he had the photo. I offer my sincerest condolences, Gaston. Yes. We are both very sorry for your loss. It is what it is. Part of life, really. But to know someone for... I just don't know anymore. About anything, really. But you... You must need something. No, we don't need anything, Gaston. Bye for now. Take care. Well, it's 8 in the morning. There's uh, virtually nothing left for us to do, so I'm going to run over to Everart. See what he has to say. Oh, you know what? I think there's some stuff we can buy at the bookstore. We could do that. Let's do that after we talk to Everart. Oh, you know what? Let's check the booth. Is there anything in the booth? I thought... This is the Night Watchman's booth. The name on the door reads... Rene Arno. Rene left his uniform neatly folded on the table. Let's take it. Maybe we can give it to Gaston as well. I suppose Rene is not going to be needing it anymore. It's a bit too colorful for my taste, though. What is Superstar going to do? You know what? He's going to play it down. Okay, Superstar is going to play it down. I'm done here. Fantastic. Try not to wear it with other similarly colorful clothes, okay? <laughs> okay, Kim. Another thought. Numerous empty wine bottles glisten in the rain. Someone partied really, really hard here. Wait, how hard? Well, they went through six bottles of potent Pilsner, three bottles of Commodore Red, and almost four packs of cigarettes. It must have been pretty hard. Was it me? Well, yes, I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. This is really sad. I must have been miserable. Yes. This scene isn't exactly ripping with joy. Let's just move on. 
Let's go talk to Everart. I wonder if we had come to the booth before if we could have talked to Renee, but I'm pretty sure he was out with Gaston yesterday. Okay, before we go talk to Everart, let's check out our new clothes. So we've got the Royal Carabiner jacket, plus one to Revacholian nationhood, proud nationalist. The beautifully adorned jacket of the Royal Carabiners has three stars on its shoulders and the word Capitan written on the chest, neatly patched here and there. It's impossible not to feel love for the fatherland when you wear it. Do we have? I don't. I think this is a thought we don't have. And then the pants are plus one reaction speed, vigilance. Wow, they really are bright. These pants are made from synthetic lightweight fiber and designed to let the carabiner's legs and groin breathe. Red stripes are there to inspire courage, while the golden stripe symbolizes the patriotic flame of the wearer's heart. Screw it, let's put these on. Okay, we don't have electrochemistry, but now we have some reactions. Oh my God, look at those pants. Wow, superstar. Those are not becoming. Oh, wow. That is not a good look for you. So obviously we need to put on this jacket. Oh yeah, that's, oh boy, that's a look. And look, you can see we're holding the drugs in our hand. I just realized that. Wow, that's uh, something else. I can't, I, I, wow. Okay, let's undo that as quickly as possible. I'm not even sure I can wear those pants. Let's go talk to Everett. Everett, we're back. We can hear you typing. Let's see if you've got anything new to say. Everett. Mr. Dubois, the word in Martinez is a certain police officer is once again happily reunited with his service weapon. Congratulations, my friend. No thanks to you. I prefer my police officers old-fashioned like that, with a gun. You can do so many things with a gun that you can't do without one. Now, what can I help you with? Why does he say he's a gun so strangely? Look, my gun, and let's show it to him. My, my. She's quite the looker, Harry. You can't imagine how pleased I am the two of you are reunited. Tell me, was it difficult to convince the pigs to give it up? No, not at all. I knew you could handle it. I know my special policeman. Anyway, I'm glad you're all right and armed again, Harry. Now, what can Everett Claire do for you? All right, I'm going to go through these. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be anything valuable. A few more questions about the harbor. All right, Everett, I'm going to leave now, but we might talk again later. Fruitless. Let's go over to the bookstore and see if Playsense wants to sell us a board game or a book. Let's go talk to Playsense. Oh, what, what? No, come here. It takes willpower to even read the author's name. Jean Kaus from Egonia. I don't know what that's referring to really, but okay. Hi, Playsense. Do you have anything new to say? Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to oh, crime, very nice. romance, and biographies of famous people. Ah, uh, this Dick Mullen book fell apart before I got to the end. Do you have another? Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. Some of these old paperbacks just don't have the durability. I would be happy to sell you another one, but unfortunately, it's the last copy we had in stock. Farewell for now, book peddler. Typical. Typical. All right, let's figure out... Wait, what's going on over here? Is there more stuff we can get from this? Shells filled no. to the brim. See if we can, because there's still that map check. Although I don't know what that's Several about. Several maps. Have the maps look old and no. All right, book peddler. Let's see what else you have for sale. What's over here in the Hemdall books? The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyundar somewhere. Okay, before we buy these two books, which I think we're going to do, I believe there's a board game over here. A small mountain oh. of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by we're our related merchandise. Okay, I think we can afford all of everything. We can certainly afford the 37 here, and it was 18 over there, I'm sure. So let's buy Suzerainty. Wonderful choice, sir. A wholesome family game. Awesome, and let's buy the Whirl game. If you say so, but you better stay away from those immoral occult rituals. We will. Thank you, Placence. Let's go over here, although you're into the occult. 
The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Kiondal somewhere. That's right, we're pretty much blowing our entire wad on all the stuff in place in this store. I want to buy him Dollar Man. Oh yes, certainly. Another good sale. And Man from Hyamdal and the Devil Woman. It is a bestseller for a reason. Okay, well, so we cleaned her out, which is awesome. Let's see if she says anything about that. Like, thanks so much for paying my rent. Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Okay, farewell for now, Placence. We're going to go here. And that's actually where we're going to leave it for today. Next episode, we will do what sounds extremely exciting to you and I, I'm sure. And that is read a bunch of books to pass the time because we need to kill six hours and 43 minutes. So thank you very much for your viewership and support. I love you very much. Please remember to have your pets spayed or neutered.